Greetings you YouTube denizens of the deep. This is Wadrace back again with another tier 10 replay from the German cruiser the Hindenburg. And before I get into warships, I am going to get a little bit off topic and say that I am very happy today because I finally managed to get out to the gun range. I have a Mosin Nagant 9130A 1903A3 Springfield Smith Corona and a M1 Garand that I have just been itching to get to the gun range for the last couple of months, but between weather and work, it just kind of seems like the plans never really lined up. I also have a 1911 Colt and an FM57. Now, I will say these guns are all bought and paid for legally. I have gone through all the proper background checks, and I simply enjoy taking them out to the range and shooting them off every now and then. The Springfield and the Garand fire the 30-06, which is all the way here on the left. The Mosin-Nagant fires the 762x54R, which is the rifle range right, right next to it. Of course, the 1911 fires the 45 ACP, and then the FN57 fires the little bitty round all the way to the right of here. And they're just fun things to sort of pop off every now and then. And while it may not exactly be the most incredible display of marksmanship, these are my targets for the day. And I got 83 rounds on paper from the rifles. And when you consider that I fired, say, 120 rounds, my shoulder's definitely going to be hurting tomorrow. But at least I got to sling some lead, and I am substantially happier now that I've had the chance to blow off that little bit of steam. With that little aside out of the way, I will come back to your warships video. And one of the things that I really want to discuss is something that I actually kind of found out the hard way, which is that these two ships, the Tier 9 and 10 German battleships, the Friedrich de Grosse and the Grosse Kurfürst, both had 60 millimeter bow plating. And this is something that is rather significant because that means that these two ships are unique in the sense that they cannot be overmatched by any armor-piercing shells from any ship in game. They can't even be overmatched by the armor-piercing from the Imperial Japanese Tier 10 battleship, the Yamato, with its 18-inch guns. Now, this armor can still be penetrated with certain levels of high explosive shells, which if you're looking at the Germans with the one-fourth calculation on high explosive shells, you're looking at 185 millimeter guns with, you are running a captain with IFHE as your uh, minimum to penetrate the 60 millimeter armor, and 240 millimeters if you are running a captain without IFHE. For your normal one-sixth calculation, that is 360 millimeters or 280 millimeters for a captain running IFAG. And speaking of captain skills, that is actually something that I am running this Hindenburg with for this match. Now, fortunately, I don't run into a Kurfürst or a uh, Friedrich de Grosse, but I do have this captain with IFAG. And this is actually one of the skills that I kind of regret having because it is a four skill a four-point skill that is actually kind of useless on these guns. And I'm making a point of respecting my guns, or my commander, and just giving him manual fire control for anti-air batteries instead of IFAG. As far as his other skills, he has preventative maintenance, expert marksman, adrenaline rush, advanced firing training, and basic firing training with the simple switchover again from IFHE and manual AA. Now again, these are not the exact skills that he is using in this match. This opening section was actually recorded after the match, so well before the respec, but again I just wanted to make a point of showing that. And the uh, manual fire control for AA isn't exactly necessary with this ship because even without it, the defensive rating is already at 100. We are talking murderous levels of AA on this ship to begin with. The manual AA just makes it a little bit better at the uh, longer ranges especially, and just allows me to focus down squadrons even more 
which is a little bit of a bonus when you're talking about tier 10 aircraft carriers. And getting into the match, I mean, it's going to be a slow start as always. Anybody who plays World of Warships knows that it always takes time to find the enemy. But it doesn't matter if you're in co-op, random battles, it just takes time to get things moving and started. And I just like showing that just because I feel like jumping straight into the action is doing the game a little bit of a disservice. If all you're showing is the action, that's all people really get used to seeing. And when they get into the game, they say, what is all this boring shit waiting to actually get anywhere? And, well, while they're not exactly wrong, it's still very realistic with the gameplay just showing that, hey, this is what it's like. You have short moments of just sheer action and devastation, and more often than not, just uh, somewhat extended periods of sailing around, trying to find targets and not really doing much of anything. And this is kind of the way it would be in real naval engagements. Now, right here I am detected, and I know that it's something closer, and, well, hey, guess what? There's the Kia. I could tell that it wasn't a cruiser, because if it were a cruiser, it would have popped up on my detection substantially earlier, pretty much about the same time that I was detected. The fact that I was detected, but I couldn't see anything, means that it was definitely something that was smaller, had low detectability, and, well, destroyers really only fit are the only things that fit that bill. Now, this Kiev, being a Russian, has rather substantial detectability range, and it just doesn't last long. It certainly doesn't amount to much in the battle as a whole. And of course, looking over to my front, there is the enemy gearing, which has actually grounded itself which, when you're staring down a tier 10 cruiser, isn't exactly the only best position to be. And I definitely punish it for it. Now, one little funny note here is that the destroyer's actually already popped its damage control, which means this hit here, I've already set it on fire, so I actually managed to burn down the destroyer, which is actually rather uncommon. Usually they die from shell hits, not from the uh, damage over time aspects of the game, like flooding or fire. That doesn't mean that it can't happen, but it is definitely interesting when you can catch it. I did pop Torps over towards the island in hopes of catching the uh, Edinburgh that's coming around there, and then I kind of bring my attention back over to the Hindenburg. But with the Hindenburg being now on and I got a P load, I do switch back over, pop a shot at the uh, Edinburgh. And, well, now that I know that the Hindenburg has dropped torps on the uh, rather unfortunate thing with Chapaya, it is only obligatory that I drop torps on it, now that I am definitely playing in the clear. Ah, gotta love dropping torpedoes on the light ships that uh, really can't take torpedoes to save their lives. Of course, now I am simply staring down an Edinburgh with nothing but my guns. And broadside on, Edinburgh should technically be capable of carrying me a new one, but I am doing my best to keep my angle in, and I do switch over to AP to kind of finish it off right here. And at least the rear guns still have a flat enough angle to penetrate and hit the Citadel. Now, anybody who's keeping count, this is four ships now that I have sunk. Two destroyers, two cruisers. I have 99,000 damage already for this match. And to those of you who have also been paying attention, my anti-air batteries have just been absolutely shredding any aircraft that comes into my airspace. I already have 27 kills for planes, with more on the way, and I've only really used my defensive AA once, and that was when 
at the start of the match when I knew most of the airplanes were going to be cutting through and towards me. Now I do have to uh, question the friendly gear in here a little bit as to what he was aiming at. I'm not sure if he was aiming at the Alabama or the Missouri. If he was aiming at the Alabama, he certainly failed. He didn't calculate for where it was going or what it was doing and just kind of missed all around. If he was aiming for the Missouri, he definitely, definitely succeeds because we see three of the torpedoes disappear from the scope here very shortly. That being said, again, I just kind of have to wonder which one he was actually targeting. Again, if it was the Missouri, well played. If it was the Alabama, uh, gearing, you missed. <laughs> but at any rate, it leaves a nice juicy Missouri for me to come in and with my freshly reloaded torpedoes to land kill number five. Now, admittedly, both sets of torpedoes on this Missouri were probably overkill, but you know what? Better be safe than sorry. And then, of course, I have to uh, quickly steer and re steer to avoid grounding myself on the island. Now, I have made five kills. That is unusual, honestly, at tier 10. That, again, it's not to say that it can't happen, but it's definitely one of those things where... And, and yeah, I do have to admit I've probably kind of sapped off of some of the other teammates. But again, this is co-op. A lot of these ships are bots, and I do have to say that I have probably been the more effective member of this team already, simply because the friendly Alabama worked his way over the side of the map, and I'm not rightly sure what all he did. The enemy Missouri, I don't know when he died. He certainly didn't seem to do very much. He certainly didn't score any kills. At least the Alabama can say that he's gotten a kill. But other than that, I mean, I really don't know what the other actual players on my team were doing. I do commend the gearing and that he did go over and try to capture. Um, I, I, again, I don't know what he contributed to this battle. He has no kills without seeing his uh, actual capture progress or his... Uh, damage screens, I can't really imagine that he actually came out very well on this battle, just because of how little contribution he seems to have made. I mean, I've gotten the majority of kills on the on two destroyers and two cruisers. Now, that's not to say that he didn't farm damage on the battleship. He certainly got in some, a good hit or two on the Missouri. But... Uh, yeah. Anyway, just kind of chasing down the Lexington to finish off the match, and I will definitely say I was really, really doing a number on this Lexington. At this point, I actually have three fires burning on it. It is toast, for lack of a better term, and I was kind of hoping to get the final kill, but... This is where, at least I can say, the gearing kind of made up for his lack of, I guess, other input by finishing off the CV for me. Now, this was one of my better matches for the Sharks team. I earned 70 points with the 5 kills, plus the actual battle income, so that wasn't exactly too bad. As far as my personal standings, I made 318,000 credits. 3,700 experience points, 187 free experience points, and I did almost 179,000 points worth of damage. I got 40 plane kills, 5 torpedo hits, 5 kills, 9 incapacitations, 9 fires, and 4 floods, which, that that's rather substantial. For my actual uh, team earnings, 961 base experience points which is almost double that of our gearing, which I guess that says he did at least contribute substantially to this match. Again, I don't know how much, and I do applaud him for that at least. I certainly carried the match, if nothing else. And, I mean, look at that string of ships that I killed. 
and I certainly got decisive amounts of damage on four of them. I did 89,000 damage with my main battery guns, 75,000 with high explosive, 13,000 with armor piercing, torpedoes I did 40,000 damage, my secondary batteries actually did 12,000, if you can believe that, from a cruiser, and just the rest came from fires and floods. And then just uh, to uh, finish things off, I earned 185,000 credits net with all of the deductions and resupply costs, and my commander earned 8,500 experience points for the match. Anyway, on that note, I suppose I shall let you all go, and I will catch you all the next time I upload a video.